Happy Holidays and Merry Christmas. You're watching Drakewing Gaming. Oh, one moment. And... Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nery here for Drakewing Gaming. It's Sunny Mountain with the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Mice T, Sylvia's Path. So before we jump right back into it, just want to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel and get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Oh my god, am I going to sneeze? <coughs> oh god. <coughs> oh yes, I'm going to sneeze twice. Okay, alright. It's gorgeous! Give us a turn, girl! I hold my hands out and rotate in a languid circle without even drawing attention to how hard it should be in stilettos. Her eyes sparkle in admiration. He's so pretty! You got your hair colored nails done too! Did Adriana help you with all this? Oh yes, yeah, she was an angel. You must tell her how much I appreciate her help. She was such a dear to me. I totally will. I thought you'd be tough not to crack, but I knew she'd help you find a sense of fashion. Oh, we found more than that. How they bring all my stuff inside? For sure! We entered the hall to bring back a few bags each. It takes us more than one trip. God, I was worried you wouldn't get anything, and this this is maybe a bigger haul than anything I've done this year. Maybe I should have been more careful about letting you get as much as you want. <laughs> oh, I'm always up for big shopping spree. I live for this sort of thing. If Sylvia was surprised before, she's now shocked. I thought th I thought this was the new was new for you. Oh, I thought this was new for you. I laugh in a hearty shortle. It only makes her more disquieted. Oh, Sylvia, you're such a tease. Who would I be if I didn't go wild for a new pair of heels? Oh. I mean, I guess I didn't know you were secretly into this kind of thing. Kinda wish you had told me earlier. Oh, come now. When I have, when have you ever shut up about fashion? It's always been my biggest passion. Sylvia can't help looking a little irked. She hunches her shoulders like she I just finished mocking her. I mean, I think I can name a few things you're more into. I can't imagine what she's talking about. What would those be? Now she's convinced I'm making fun of her. Well, books and tea, obviously. I hear them like they're the names of acquaintances I've forgotten. Do you like to drink? Goodness, that seems like a silly thing to make into a hobby. Maybe if you were one of those people who takes English tea service every day, I suppose. And sure, working at a bookstore makes you appreciate them, when there's a spare moment. But we both know the first thing that paycheck goes to once we get it. A subtle panic seeps into Sylvia's face. She takes another long look at the pile of bags on the counter. Margaret, are you doing okay? The question feels like the most absurd one she could ask. Of course I'm fine, I've never felt better! God, this vacation was just what I needed. I'm gonna have so much fun showing off this stuff out on the town. Maybe I won't bother coming back to the bookstore. Sylvia goes from concern to alarm. Margaret, you're acting weird. <clears throat> weird? What's so weird about taking your advice? She reels back in confusion only to raise her eyes in understanding. Hey, uh, Margaret? Yeah, Sylvie? Could you, uh, maybe snap out of it? Snap out of what exactly? Uh, I mean, could you wake up? Sylvia, I think you might be the one acting strange. Sylvia's eyes dart back and forth in panic. Oh god, she got tranced. <sighs> Crap, what did I say to her last night? Her eye, her shifting eyes snag on my shoes and they zigzag up my body as she takes in my outfit once again. No, it couldn't. Couldn't, couldn't what, Sylvie? Margaret, you... You look atrocious in that outfit! Oh. The harsh light of clarity hits me like a truck. What? Sylvie, I... Oh my god! Remember my shopping trip comes flooding back to me. Did I buy all that? What the fuck did I say to those stylists and the employees and Did I call Adriana Drica? I barely even know her. She probably thinks I'm a huge bitch. What the fuck am I wearing? Are my tits bigger again? My chest is compressed by the weight of my memories, the clothing, and the knowledge of what just happened. Oh my god, my chest! I can't breathe! <clears throat> Sylvia rushes over to try calming me. I don't let her lay her hands on my person. I'm afraid I'll go under again. Margaret, calm down. It's fine. You're okay. It's over now. It's not fine, Sylvia. I lost control of myself. I don't know if it's going to happen again. What if I can't stop? We know how to stop it, okay? I'm here to help you. I can't hang around you forever, Sylvia. I'm going to... I'm going to stop being me. The idea is mortifying. I've almost lost myself. I almost lost my passions, priorities, and self in a grotesque burlesque of Sylvia's personality. I can't handle the thought. Look, I learned a little bit about hypnosis when I was training in magic. You just got triggered by something. Something Adriana said must have flipped a switch. 
Different prompts are tied to different behavior. When you follow those prompts, your brain rewards you with good feelings. If we're careful, we can figure out what those are what those are and avoid them. The terror that grips my heart loosens its grasp for a moment. Like it's programming? Yes, exactly. We just need to figure out what I said and what Adriana said and then train you out of them. My head is spinning so much I can't tell if what she's saying makes sense or not. I don't know if I can handle much more of this. What if it doesn't work and I turn back and you can't stop it and... Don't think like that, Margaret. We're going to figure it out. We're going to get you back to normal, okay, Peggy? The boiling panic in my blood turns to ice in an instant. You! Don't you dare call me that! Sylvia looks more confused than offended. What do you mean? It's not my name! She clasps her hands to her chest takes a step back. You, you've never said anything about it before. I just meant it as a friendly nickname. That's it. The last barrier stopping me from telling her off crumbles to ash. We're not friends, Sylvia! Sylvia's poise shatters. Her eyes go white and her knees go weak. Tears well up in the corner of her eyes. We're not? No! We don't have anything in common! You flake out on shifts, you leave with a bunch of work, and you don't even apologize. You leave with a bunch of work, and you don't even apologize. You act like everyone's as rich and privileged as you are, and you look down on people for not being as fashionable as you. Do you know what would happen if I acted like you, Sylvia? I'd lose my job. I'd lose it because I couldn't get away with it by looking like you. I'd have to go live with my parents again. The ones who immigrated to this country worked full-time jobs so I could go to college and get a degree that barely keeps me solvent. After all they did for me, you think I could just look them in the eye after that? And you come in and coach through life and belittle my looks and taste? We are not friends. <sighs> Say no. Damn. Sylvia trembles so much her jewelry audibly clinks together. We... I thought... She breaks down and cries. Her chest flutters with squeaking gasps as she clutches the neckline of her dress. Ugly, sobbing tears run down her cheeks, taking streaks of mascara with them. Her lip quivers like she's been doused in a torrent of ice water. She draws one giant breath and looks me straight in the eye one last time. With the final wail, she runs into her bathroom and slams the door behind her. Her barely muffled sobs bleed through the door. There. Now she knows. Hopefully she never shows up at the store again. If I have to cut this vacation short, it'll be worth it. Somehow telling her off makes me feel more in control. If I can reject Sylvia, maybe I can reject the obscene personality she's foisted on me. Either way, I have to do it alone. Once I get rid of all the offending material. Look down at the heaps of shopping bags covering the tables and counters. God, I have to deal with this crap, don't I? I didn't have her help figuring out how the hell to fix this either. I need to get home and not listen to or read anything for a while. Maybe I need to write instructions for what to do if I, la if I lapse again. I reach into the bag with the receipt in it. I take him the care to fold it and place it in an envelope. I reach to the floor when I unfurl it. I rifle through it until I get it to the full total. Holy crap, I really spent that much? That's more than my rent! The original outfit is buried at the bottom of one of the bags. I search through the strata of clothing. Each time I touch a piece, the memory of trying it on or selecting it pops back into my head along with the faint echo of the rush I'd gotten each time. It's like each one is coated in a fuzzy static that jolts me with tiny doses of euphoria when I brush against them. Oh, this skirt was so cute when I matched it with that. I dropped the skirt like it stung me. Ugh, I can't go through all this stuff like this. I'll have Sylvia find my normal clothes and have her drop them off at the bookstore. I look down and shift my weight from foot to foot. First of all, I have to get out of these clothes. I have, I have to get out of these shoes. Even if they do make my butt look amazing. Again! Ah, she's still doing it to me! I need to get some sweets, some sweats quickly. Sylvia hasn't gotten any quieter as I approach the bathroom door. Sylvia? There are a few seconds of sniffling before she responds. Yeah? I'm leaving. I want you to send my normal clothes to the bookstore so I can pick them up. I'll drop this outfit off with your doorman in a couple days so you can return it for the ungodly amount you made me spend on it. Oh, okay. I stand there for a moment longer. I don't know if I'm expecting an apology or an excuse or something, but I stand there long enough for her to open the door and step out. Her face is a mess. Her eyes are puffy and the streaks of mascara and I have marks from where she wiped away her tears. I had to feel a little bad despite myself. It takes a few moments for her to find the breath to speak. I'm sorry this happened to you and that I've been such a bad friend. I want to leave it there. Let that statement hang is the last thing either of us ever say to each other. My curiosity gets the better of me. Why did you even think we were friends? Well, you were always so nice. Sylvia, that's just being polite. It's, it, I'm nice to our customers, too. I'm not friends with them. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah but you always talked with me and didn't seem to mind when I missed shifts. Sylvia, I hate it when you miss shifts. It's the worst thing about working at Barlow's. But 
you always said it was fine whenever I brought it up. Well, I... It's my turn to feel bad. I'm not brave enough to speak up, I guess. I'm not that great at confrontation. I tend to keep it all locked up until I, uh, burst, apparently. Both silent for a moment. Sylvia return, returns to something approaching normal breathing. I guess it was stupid of me to think we could be friends. My whole life I'd never had a female friend who's, you know, smart. The word makes me step back. What do you mean? I don't know, all the smart girls I went to school with looked down on me, you know? They all thought I was a ditz because I liked fashion and girly stuff and I had this figure. You were the only woman my age who didn't scoff or look down their nose at me when I talked about that kind of stuff. First, like, lady who went to college. First, like, lady who went to college. I got several save right there. <clears throat> but it turns out you were just humoring me. My head feels like it's been beamed with a dodgeball. Sylvie, I'm not smart. I read a bunch of books and wear glasses, that's all. Margaret, of course you're smart. You got good grades in college, right? Yeah, but you know grade inflation and stuff. You know every new release that comes out and their authors as well as their whole bibliography. I'm just a nerd about that kind of thing. If I knew a lot about baseball players, that wouldn't make me smart. You fix everything around the store, though. Like how you fixed the internet that one time even when the guy from the cable company couldn't. Ah, well, I think that technician was just being lazy. All I did was look up the same problem other people had and followed some instructions. And read some of the networking books we had. Wait, does Sylvie actually respect me? She wipes her nose and looks away. Even today at work, I kept thinking Margaret would be able to handle this stuff better. I had trouble remembering the new releases, and nobody bought any of my recommendations, and even though Felix was busy trying to hire people, he wouldn't let me do any inventory stuff. He didn't say anything mean or anything, just kind of felt like he, you know, didn't trust me with that kind of stuff. Sylvia, you know you don't show much initiative working there, right? Maybe not. Not recently, at least. But I used to try really hard, and I still try to be nice to the customers and put a lot of effort into my recommendation cards, even if they're pretty much all trashy romance novels. I'm, not, I'm just not great at sticking to things. I wish I could be more diligent like you. I've always been jealous of you for that. She whimpers like a chastened puppy. Dang it, why am I such a pushover? You know, when we first started working together, I really thought we were going to become friends. You were so much fun to talk to, and I sort of had the same issue you had with the smart girls, only had it with proper popular girls. I feel like the strange, fascinating chance to have this kind of friend I've never had before. Then work stuff got in the way, and it never happened. But maybe if we figure this out and things get back to normal, we could start over again? And see if we become friends this time. Sylvia starts to grin, but we were suppressed in the show of excitement. Yeah, if you think that's a possibility, weird, weird events tend to draw people together. And what's weirder than turning into animals with hip hypnotic powers? I'd rather not find out. So, do you think we can really figure this out? Sylvia sniffles some more. Yeah, I really am going to try and fixing this for you. Just let me clean my face, okay? She ducks back into the bathroom and blots her, her face clean with a few makeup wipes. She can't help herself from putting on another application of powder before returning. So, um, when did you first start noticing changes? I think back to my time at the department store. It's tough separating my own thoughts and those that were imposed on me. Well, I was a little reluctant to shop at first, but Adriana encouraged me to try some stuff on. It seemed reasonable. I did need some new outfits, after all. So it was gradual the whole time. Well, not totally gradual. Uh, there were definitely some spikes in how things changed. They usually happened when I tried something on, I guess. Well, around the time I put them on, like when I thought about how they might be used or... A speed bump in my memory jostles something loose. Wait. What did you ask me to do before you got me that car? Before you left? Just try on some clothing, I guess. Yeah, I remember you asked me to do something specific, like instructions. But I didn't have any hypnotic powers this morning, did I? I don't think so, but I think you repeated something you told me to do last night. I think that might have awoken something you implanted earlier. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm gonna give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank y'all for all of you for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. And thank you to our gold tier patron, Amr. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for submitting your ultimate tier anyway. If y'all want to get your names and the credits, get access to our not safe for work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye!